One of the most interesting moments in the story of the birth of Jesus comes shortly after he is born when he shows up at the temple. He is eight days old, give or take, and uh, he has been circumcised and brought to the temple to offer a, a sacrifice by the parents in honor of his birth. And there's a fellow named Simeon there. So now Simeon's a fellow who is devout and righteous, and uh, we're going to look at Simeon today because Simeon has been told something rather amazing, that he would not die before he had seen the one that God had chosen to save the world, to bring salvation. And so here comes Mary and Joseph, and they have their small uh, child, and they're going to make this sacrifice of two turtle doves. And uh, Simeon walks up and asks to hold the child, as you do when you have a newborn, and as happens. And uh, Simeon doesn't just rock the child and give him back. He, sa he blesses the child and says, this, this child, this is salvation. This child is good news, not just for Israel, but for all the world. And he says then of this child, after seeing him, God, you can now release me. I can die in peace. My life is complete. I have looked at this child and that, that's it. My, my life is finished. He can cross off his bucket list, right? He's done. He is happy. And that's an amazing thing to say. Think about where this is in the story, right? The child has been born. Jesus has been born. He's a weak and some old. He has not said a word. He has much less taught disciples. He has not gone to the cross, resurrection, all that, everything to come. That's, that's all years, decades down the road. At this point, what Jesus has done is showed up. That's it. That's all he has done. He has showed up. And yet somehow there is something so important, so incredible about this, that Simeon looks at him and says, I have seen salvation. I have seen good news. This is so good that my life is complete now. What an amazing statement. Before we try to figure out why he can say that, first we need to spend a minute defining a word because we're about to talk about salvation. And we toss that word around, salvation. We get saved, salvation, Jesus comes, saved from sins. and We use that word salvation often, but I think we need to take a minute before we plunge ahead to make sure we're all on the same page on what that actually means. When we say salvation, what we're using is a word in Greek that's the same word that a doctor uses when he saves your life. It is not, it, to talk about salvation, it, it, it's the verb is sozo, and, and we still use that language today, right? A, a doctor saves your life. And, and to, to talk about sa salvation in this sense has that sense of being made whole, being made complete, being made right. But it goes farther than what a doctor can do, because a doctor can only touch your body. This is salvation, this is the healing and the making whole of body and of soul. Salvation is being made whole in the very essence of who you are, body and soul. And that's what Simeon sees in this child. And so Simeon declares, I have seen salvation here. And what has he seen? When we look at Jesus, we declare him to be fully human and fully divine, right? That, that's our, our creed. That's our faith. Two natures, one person. And so something about seeing this, experiencing this unique person, fully human, fully divine, something about that changes everything. Something about having fully human and fully divine together is, is going to bring Simeon this joy and peace. And yet, we as a church, we struggle to hold these together, right? We struggle at times to hold Jesus as fully human and fully divine together. We tend to lean one way or the other. We, we tend to say he's one but not the other, or kind of lean one way or the other. It, in the first centuries of the church, it was easy for people to believe that Jesus was fully divine. The question was, is he fully human? That's what they struggled with for the first four or five centuries. It was easy to say, well, he's obviously God, but is he fully human? And, and so they kicked around such thoughts as, like, Jesus was kind of a divine hologram. You, d you don't poke him because your hand would go right through. I mean, he's God, but he's not really there. Not fully human. Or, or the idea that... Jesus is God, but wearing a human suit. It's like Jesus decided, you know, I'm going to be God, but I'm going to put on the, a real, I got this tailored suit, and it's a human suit, and I was put it on, and, and if some of you are thinking of the first men in black, that's exactly what I'm thinking of. Uh, and uh, 
he uh, come, shows up, but you don't cut him because underneath you're not going to find any organs because that, that's God in there. Uh, and, and what happened is they realized, as they chewed on this, they realized if Jesus is fully divine but not fully human, well, what's, what good is that for us? Because if God tells us what to do from the top of a mountain and we mess it up, or if God gets right here in Jesus and tells us what to do and we mess it up, we're still messing it up, right? We are still people who are broken and have problems. We, you can call it original sin. You can call it our bent to evil. Call it what you will, but we are not as good as we could be. Sometimes we're amazing, but sometimes we are really just, well, yeah. We're not what we could be. And to, for God to be up there and tell us we're, we're messed up, and for God to be right here and tell us we're messed up, well, we're messed up. That doesn't, for God to be, for Jesus to be fully God and not human, well, that's just getting told you're wrong closer. So what? Doesn't help us. And what we see today is the flip side, though. Today, we don't hear many people saying, you know, he's fully God, but I'm not sure about that human thing. What we hear more often today is, you know, I'm sure he was human. I mean, we have records of his existence. And we, we know that he existed and he is human. I'm not sure on that God thing. And we hear people say things like, you know, he was a great teacher, wasn't he? He was just a, a phenomenal teacher. He was so close to God, he just showed us. You know, the problem with him just being a great teacher goes something like this. You all have a driver's ed teacher? I, I, I had one. You know what he taught me? Don't speed. Do you all ever speed? You know, you can have the greatest teacher in the world, and they're not, you're not always going to do what they taught you, right? And, and what the other problem with a teacher is that uh, sometimes they're wrong. Most of the time they're right, but I know that they can be wrong because when my driver's ed teacher gave me the test to get our driving permit, I found a mistake in the test. And I quickly got a reputation for being a smart aleck, which I deserved. And, uh, <laughs> but yet, if Jesus is just one good teacher among many, eh, I've had many teachers. If I do half of what a teacher taught me, they're doing great, right? That's about, if Jesus is fully human and not God, you know, eh, like a driver's head teacher. They're useful, glad you have them, but can't really change your life, can't bring salvation. They're just good to have around. And so Simeon saw something else. Simeon didn't see someone who was fully God and put on a human suit. Simeon did not see a child that was fully human and, and would grow up to be a good man. What Simeon saw was salvation and that Jesus is fully human and fully God. Not uh, and. To hold this together, that is what we start. We, we begin to name as salvation. When the finite human and the infinite God can come together and, and hold together. The finiteness of, of our existence and the infiniteness of God come together. And it takes a minute. Let, let's, let me try to unpack exactly what it means to say the finite and the infinite come together. Because you see, we're finite, right? We are limited. We can only do so much. What it means to be human is you only have so many, so many days on this planet. Finite number of days. What it means to be human is you can only do so many, so many things with that time. What can you do today? You get to choose, but you can choose 24 hours of stuff in this day and that is it. And whatever, if you choose A, you cannot choose B. You can't do, and you can't be in two places at once. We are finite and limited people. That's what it means to be a person. And the tragedy of humanity is that we are finite and limited, and yet buried in our souls are hints of eternity. Our, our hints of the infinite, our hints of the vastness of everything that is. And so we spend our lives yearning and desiring that infinite, and, and we see it in, in our desire to create art and music that just echoes the beauty of, of the creation. And, and we are, try to have art that, that just has a glimpse of how beautiful the vastness and infiniteness of the world is. We have a sense that there's so much we can do and there's just not enough time and we just need to do more because there's so much out there. There's an infinite creation out there and we are finite. We can never do enough or live enough or love enough. And I think where the 
ultimate tragedy of this shows up when we see this maybe most clearly is when a good person dies. When someone who has followed Jesus all their life dies and we, we stand up here and we know and we proclaim the faith that they are with God and yet we still weep. We weep because we are finite and we no longer have any more time with that person and it is wrong. We are finite beings and we have a sense of the infinite and it just is a tension in us that we never really resolve. What Simeon sees in this child is the finite human and the infinite God have come together right here. To, to think about it from another angle, what, what has happened in this child is the fellowship between God and human that was lost after the Garden of Eve has been restored in this child. God and human together. The finite God experiencing the infinite possibilities and love. The finite human experiencing the infinite possibilities and love of an infinite God. And so Simeon holds this child and he has no clue what's going to happen next. He does not know how this child will grow up. He has no clue what this child will do. He does not know how this child will lead people to overcome the gap between God, people and God, between the finite and the infinite. He does not know what this child will do to bring salvation and the healing of people, the reconciliation of God, the create, of human and God, of creator and created. But what do, he does see in this child is the potential. He sees that salvation, the healing of the relationship between human and God is possible because it's right there and he's holding it. And this child will walk a path. It's a path that's a human path, and so we can follow it. And it's a divine path, so we know that it goes to God. It is this path that we call salvation. Now, that's all far down the line. I mean, that, that's all down the way. And for today, what we do is we stand with Simeon, and we bask in his joy. We bask in his satisfaction, his sense of yearning fulfilled, his desire that has been satiated, the sense that the, the tension in his life between all his hope for what could be and the, the restrictions he has as a person. And we go back to that first question, why can Simeon now die in peace? He can now die in peace because he knows that his finite self, his limited being, can be loved and embraced by an infinite God because he's seen how close the finite and the infinite can come in this child. He can walk into death knowing that while his life seems finite, limited, and, and contingent, that in Jesus the finite and the infinite come together. And if there is hope in this child, there is hope for him. We're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus this, this week. And, and while the birth of Jesus in and of itself does not bring salvation for all, what it does bring is the healing uh, of this, this gap. What it does is open the door so we can see that we can be get that close to God again. We see that there is the potential. When we meet Jesus, it is possible for God and human to be that close. And in doing so, to find healing, and that healing we call salvation. Amen.